Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Welcome to God's house. Uh, this is a an eventful Christmas for us for a couple of reasons. One, this is our first Christmas with a sign out front. That was a gift from God this uh, Christmas day. We were hoping we'd get it a few months ago, but he gave it to us, but it was his time. And it, it's working and it's blinking and there are signs and messages. We thank God for that. Also, this Christmas is uh, a first for us. We're Facebook live it now, if that's the term. I'm not sure if that's the way you say that, but we're on Facebook Live because today we're going to do a lot of singing. A lot of singing of some of the songs that, that you grew up with, that you knew uh, from your childhood. And so instead of having it recorded and played back without the music, we're going to have us sing along with the music as you are at home with us here. Let's start with our first song of praise. Oh, come all you faithful. All stand.
prayer response is in the invocation. Gracious and almighty God, we praise you who saw our need for a Savior and promised to send your everlasting Son in human flesh. You sent Jesus for all people, the weak and lonely, the troubled and frightened, the timid and helpless. Firmly implant the good news of salvation in our hearts and fill us with an eager desire to spread the word concerning what we will hear tonight. Amen. We join in hymn number 35 of the Father's love to God.
please join our, our voices and our hearts in the prayer. Dear Jesus, hear our humble prayer on this Christmas Eve as we gather in festive spirit to celebrate the wonders of your holy birth. We confess that all the words that we speak and sing to your glory this night falls far short of the praise we sinners owe you. Our God, who left your throne in heaven to appear in the holiness of our sin. It's all too often that we forget. We forget exactly why he had to come. We forget that it was only of the Father's love. That, that he cared enough to, even though his, his creation was ruined and his perfection was ended here on earth, that he still loved us enough to send a Savior. That he loved us enough to kick them out of the garden. That he loved us enough to provide a way for us to be with him forever. And so we thank God for that first promise that he gave to Adam and Eve as we say together the words of Genesis chapter 3. Together. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Continue. A little time left for them. Number 65.
A stable was your first home, a manger your first bed. Yet for our sakes you endure far deeper humiliation than this. For you came to bear the cross, the shame, the suffering, and even death, which we sinners deserve for our sins. From Micah 5 2. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. We sing hymn number 15. Thank you for coming here and sharing our human nature. For you did this that we might share your glory and immortality in heaven. We thank you for your marvelous love, which made you willing to sacrifice yourself on the cross for us. I'll read this next passage for us. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And God did that through our Savior on the throne of his forefather David. Let us sing about that message we heard through the angels in hymn number 63. Angels we have heard on high.
Romans 12, 16. Let's hear the voice in my next prayer for the day. Bless us that we might remain faithful to you throughout our lives, ever adoring you as our Lord and King, ever trusting you as our Savior, and ever serving you as our Lord and King, ever trusting you as our Savior, and ever serving you. The next portion of scripture I'll read as well. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. If you continue with our next song of praise, step number 25, the King shall come. How many times have you said that about your Savior? Come quickly, King of Kings. Our message for today is that Christ came at the right time. You know, if you think about the Old Testament believers and all they had to go through in their waiting, that you and I don't have to go through in our waiting for him to come, for him to return. You wonder how they felt. If God had taken too long, if God was being slow to the punch, if God had forgotten about his promise, if God didn't remember them, I wonder what they thought. Because there is a point where i, I, I got to believe that every time a son was born, every time a son was given, that they were hoping it would be the Savior. Is this the one? Maybe this will be the one. Maybe God will use this one to, to crush the serpent's head because throughout their lives they, they realized that the serpent wasn't crushed. 
that he was still tempting and he was still beguiling, he was still deceiving, he was still interrupting the relationship with God by how he was acting toward them. And so when Adam and Eve had their first child and then their second child and their third and fourth, and I'm not even sure how many children they had, but they had children and none of them was the Savior. The other day in the car, somebody, I think it was Isaiah, remarked, that somebody lived almost a, th- a thousand years. Methuselah was his name. A thousand years, 969 years he lived. Think how many kids that he, that he would have had. Or kids he would have seen born. And I wonder if every time a son was born, they would have said, is that the one? And I, how many of you, when you had your first child, thought, there's my retirement plan? No? You haven't had a child yet. But that's the hope, right? That, that when you get to be, they'll take care of you, that you'll have a child that will be able to care for you when you're old and, and you can't do it anymore for yourself. And you want that for, imagine them wanting a child that would be their savior. A child that would be the one who would crush and who would build up, who would establish that kingdom forever. That would do all of those things. And how long it took. It didn't happen in the period before they went to Egypt. It didn't happen while they were in Egypt. It didn't happen when they came back to Canaan, although they had leaders like Moses and Joshua, and they had judges like, like Deborah and Gideon that were, were solid individuals, but they didn't have Jesus, they didn't have the Messiah. It didn't happen when they returned to Canaan and overtook the lands and, and had kings that they crowned, as Saul and David and so forth and so on. None of them were it, although there some other, a couple of them had good qualities, but they weren't the same, they weren't the Messiah. And then they get taken into exile. I wonder if they were just like, God, really? When will you come? Did you forget? Maybe that's why it's not surprising that there are so many people that didn't quite get it. That they just couldn't quite understand it because they had forgotten God's promise. But God had not forgotten them. God is always on time. In Galatians 4, verse 4, we hear these words. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. When the time had fully come. Not when Adam or Eve wanted, but when the time had fully come. Not when the Israelites cried out, but when the time had fully come. Not when the Romans got into power, but when the time had fully come. When God's time for his plan was there, he sent the Messiah. He sent the king. Amidst all the turmoil going on in the world, against having a, a bad king named Herod ruling in a region, a, a, a spineless governor called Pilate in another region, a, 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 a pagan in the, in the Roman government, head of the Roman government, the, the emperor, and yet still in that time, the time when it was God's time, he sent the Messiah. I think about that for us because I think right now we say the words, come quickly, Lord Jesus, come. And we say it because this world is a mess. Has it gotten better or worse in your lifetime? Everybody says worse. Ask every generation. They say, it was like this when I was a child. When I was a kid, we had respect for our elders. When I was a kid, every generation says that, right? I mean, have you heard yourself saying, ah, oh, kids these days. Yeah. At 46, I'm already saying it about my kids these days. And that every generation thinks that it, it was better when they were younger, and that now, oh God, I don't know how we can keep on going because this world is going bad real fast. And you're right. We're living in the last times. You're right. The world isn't getting better. You're right. But recognize that it won't end on your time. It won't end because, because you're fed up. It won't end because you're sick and tired. It'll end when God's time for it to end is. So we can sit around for the next 20, 40, 30 years, 50, 70, I mean, whoever God gives you. And we can sit around together and we can complain. We can complain about the government, the officials. We can complain about the weather. Lord, that it's, 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 it's too much snow, not enough snow, not enough good snow, not a good pack, a good, good pack of snow. You complain about the, the, the bees and the other bees, the ones, the killer bees and 
the honeybees. We can complain about, about all those things that are wrong in the world. And you wouldn't be wrong in saying that they're wrong or not good for you. Or you could complain about your life. Woe is, woe is you. You had to wake up this morning, whoa. That's a tough, tough one. You had to actually make breakfast, oh. You had to leave the house, oh. I just said hi to my neighbors. Man, would they just leave me alone? <laughs> and, or, and then there are actually real problems that you go to that, that are things that you're struggling with that are real and intense. And, and, we, and we can dwell on those things that we could and say, God, please, in this style, I can't stand another, another sideline chat with my neighbor about things I care less about. Lord, Lord, just end it now. I don't, I don't want to go through more of this waking up and sleeping pain that I go through because my body hurts. And I, and bodies hurt. And hearts ache. And minds go through from confusion. And we are, God, come quickly, Lord, come. And we, we have that same thought about our own personal lives. Like, I just want to get to heaven fast. But it won't be on your time. It'll be on God's time. When, 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 when God sees fit to end this world, then we'll have the blast of the archangel and we'll see Christ turning on the trumpet and Christ will come again. But until then, we kind of have a job to do. It, it's, it's a wonderful job if we pick it up and do it. It's, it's a great job if we, if we would just let God lead us. It's a wonderful thing to share God's word, first of all, with yourself. I know that sounds selfish, but, but when you share the word of God with yourself, get, get into the Bible, open up the book, get out your, your tablet and, and go through and read scripture and, and, and know it and, and love it and then love it to know it and just go back and forth and just, just dive into that word of God for yourself. That's one of the beautiful things about being alive right now. You get to do that wherever you are. And then you get to share it with other people. I mean, I... If, 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 I, if I got nothing else from the social media sites, it's how do you find out what's going on to someone else's social media site? What do they do? They click like, and then they click share. They click like, and then they hit share. We like Jesus. Is that an understatement? Yeah, we love Jesus. Let's click love and share. All the time that God gives us, Click love and share. Not just when it's the great times, it's a great video, it's a great TikTok, it's a great Instagram, or whatever it is that you find great. Not just when your life is going swell, but all the time. Click love and share. Because it won't end just because you're fed up. So that was the case. It ended about uh, 30 years ago. It was like uh, March 17th. I I'm just saying. It would, it, for me, it would have been like, okay, God, I'm done now. I'm accomplished all I want to accomplish. I'm, 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 I'm on eighth grade. Let, let it be done. That was my thought back then. And he's like, no, I'm going to give you some more years. Okay, God, I don't know what else I can do in those years. And then he shows you. If it was just when I was sick and tired, if it was just when you were fed up or when you were sick and tired or when you had, we were exhausted or you were at your wit's end or your heart was aching, it would have been done already, but it's not depending on us. Just like our salvation is depending on us. When the time has fully come, God sent his son. We didn't send his son. God sent his son. He was born of a woman, born of the law. For us, we're born of the law. And so he came and he suffered and died for us. And the spirit worked that faith in our hearts so that we might, for as, level, ever as long as God gives us, be his ambassadors. Now, I think about that day when the angels appeared and the shepherds were there waiting for whatever shepherds wait for, you know, if it was for the next sheep to go running off or something, waiting for the next sheep to go and get some bad grass or, or, or need some water or whatever, so they're just waiting. It's kind of like our lives where we are just waiting. We were living, but things happen and we react to them and we're waiting. And someone down the time of our waiting, whether it was early on when we were babies or later on, came to us and the angels came to the shepherds and said, Behold, the time of David, a Savior is born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And the Holy Spirit caused us to go like those like those those uh, shepherds over to that that manger and see that child of that manger and, and see what Christ had done is going to do for us. 
we became the children. But those shepherds didn't stop right there. <laughs> they didn't just hang around Mary and Joseph for the next 30 years and you know, hoping to get some of the gold that the wise men brought a few years later. They weren't those hanger ones. They, they went out. They, they, they found Jesus. They, they loved him and then they shared him. They went away worshiping him and praising him by sharing with others. And that's what our goal is. Whether it's in regular worship where we gather together and sit at the pew. Or whether it's online as we have access to now. Or, or whether it is when school gets that back in and we have the little children running around and get to impact them. God calls on us to share the gospel. Not to worry about when he'll return. But just know that he will. It was like the first gun of our Savior wasn't on, on our time, but it was on God's time. And God is always on time. But even now, as we wait for stimulus, wait for vaccine, wait for the, the cure, wait for... How about we just wait on God? And when his time is there and it's right, he will bring us home. And he will take care of whatever is ailing us the problem that we might rest comfortably in his arms. May God bless you this Christmas as you go to the danger again and you see your Savior. Just quick love and share. Amen. At this point in time in our worship service, we will gather all of the thanks uh, we won't be doing that uh, right now uh, due to our COVID restrictions, but we'd like to give to our worship and our ministry here. There's a box in the back uh, you can put your offering in, as well as those of you who uh, like the, the mobile apps, please give us that app and give that way. You have to give. prayers for this evening will focus on just the, the fact that our Savior was born and that we need to share with the world. Uh, there are many other people in your heart that you will focus on as we do a silent portion as well before we go into the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Granted, as we know, have known on earth the wonder of that light, we may also behold him in all his glory in the life to come. Through your only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Join our hearts and our voices in the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It was suggested to me uh, earlier this month, or maybe even last month, that we have not done a candlelight Christmas Eve service uh, since I've been here. And so uh, thank you for suggesting that. And so now, if you would like, we've given you candles in the holder. I'll come around uh, and I'll use the light of the Christmas weather, the Christ candle, to light the rest of our candles, that our light might shine.
Live in harmony with one another, serving the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. 
The Lord will bring you his favor and give you peace. Amen. For our final song today, we'll hear a selection from the series. He and Yonder made your love. Thank you. 